Hey everyone, welcome back to Kudro. In this video, I'm going to be going over the Ninja Input plugin by Ninja Bear Studios. So this plugin is designed to streamline and enhance the way player input is managed using Unreal's Enhanced Input System. So it simplifies input handling by separating input code from character code and offers a variety of pre-made input handlers that can easily be customized or extended through Blueprints or C++. And let's go over on how you can set this up in your project and I'll be starting from a blank third person template. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just started up a third person template. I'm going to head over to edit and go to plugins. And then I'm just going to look for Ninja input. Make sure this is checked and it'll ask you to restart. So go ahead and do that. And after my engine restarted, I'm just going to create a player controller. So I want to go to my world settings and extend my selected game mode just to add it right here to my player controller class. So I'm going to right click and create a blueprint class of a player controller. And I'll just call this BP underscore Ninja player controller and double click to open this up. And now once this opens up, under the components tab, I'm going to click on this plus sign to add, and I'm going to look for the Ninja input manager component. And we're just going to go ahead and add this to our player controller like so, and I'll hit compile. So I'm simply going to go to my third person map and open up my BP third person character. And you'll see in the event graph, there are a ton of blueprints here, and I can actually just erase all of them simply by just deleting everything like so. And now back in my third person map, I'm simply going to go to the input folder, which is in third person and then input. And in here, I'm going to right click and create my Ninja input setup. So I'm going to right click, select input and look for that Ninja input setup. I'm just going to call this NIS underscore gameplay like so. And I'm going to open this up and add my input mapping context. So there's a section here called input mapping context. And I'm just going to select that IMC default that I already have. And now let's add three new entries to the input handler list. So you'll see input handlers on the left here and you'll see this button so I can add to this array. And now when I open this, you're going to see a set of predefined stuff that Ninja input already gives us. So for example, there's character movement, character turn, look, jump, and so on. And there are even some gas abilities that ties into your gameplay ability system. So for example, if you want to activate an ability by attack, such as ability.attack, you can go ahead and add this. And then under input handler, you can add that input action to have like an IA attack, IA cast, and so on. So I'm simply going to change this to character move like so. And now when you expand this, you're going to see it's going to be able to block the movement tags by the following tag assigned here. And by default, it's set to input.block.movement. And now under input actions, there's an IA underscore NI underscore move that it's already assigned to. And this is from our plugins folder. So I just want to change that to what's in our project. So I have that IA underscore move like so. And then we can also set the trigger events here, such as triggered and ongoing, so that we can constantly move whenever we select the key to move. And now I'm going to add another input handler. And this one will be for the look function. And then I'm, again, I'm going to open up that input handler and make sure I select my IA underscore look that comes with our third person project. And it's also located here in the actions folder like so. And if you try to leave an index empty, it'll just say empty entry in the handler list position three like so. And then you also need to assign the input handler. So let's go ahead and just click on this drop down, select character jump. And then I'll open up that input handler and select my IA underscore jump. And now I can save it successfully like so. And now let's head back to our BP Ninja player controller because this is where we're adding our input. And I'm simply just going to assign that NIS gameplay over here. So I'm going to click on Ninja input manager. And then under input handler setup, I'm going to click plus and then I'll select that NIS gameplay like so. And I'll hit compile. And now I'm just going to head to my third person map. And then I'm going to assign that BP Ninja player controller over here on the right under my player controller class and then I'll hit save and click play and now I can easily move around I can jump I can look exactly how we assigned it using the ninja player input and here's just a little sample project that I'm working on using Cinti assets and let me show you exactly what was the point of setting up the inputs so I have this gameplay ability called GA underscore attack one and it uses this ability tag called ability dot attack and now when i'm in my player controller class in the ninja input manager i can open up my ninja input setup data asset and you'll see that i added one specifically for the gas function to activate ability by tags and now this ia underscore attack is simply set to my left mouse button over in my imc default as so and basically what i did was simply just add this ia underscore attack action and now every time i have a different weapon and so on they all have this shared ability dot attack where I simply left click and it triggers my gameplay ability system spells or attacks and so on. This can be for cast, melee, range, and whatever. So for example, I have my Sinti character with a sword and I have this little goblin character. Um, I just gave him the same UI just to test his stats. I can go ahead and just attack him 
and it does 100 damage, like so. And then I'll left click for my input and it's just simply attacking him. He's having a hit reaction that goes back. And yeah, very easy to set up and works perfectly with the gameplay ability system. And I simply equip my bow and it uses the same input to simply just shoot out my arrow like so. And yeah, it's very easy to set up. So this Ninja input plugin offers a fully integrated solution with Unreal's enhanced input system. And one thing I really do appreciate is that it does simply have a handler collection so that you can just have very straightforward functions into your ability system without having to fill up your event graph on your player character. And because we're attaching the Ninja input manager to our player controller, we'll have the same player input across different characters or pawns, meaning you can maintain consistent input handling regardless of what the player is controlling. So the separation of input logic from the character or pawn keeps the code base more modular and easier to manage, especially in larger projects. So for example, if you ride a mount, you're going to have different controls while you're on the horse. The Ninja Input Manager really simplifies this. And my favorite part, of course, is the gas functionality. So you can have a keybind of using ability.attack. And another good example is, for example, when you play MOBAs like Dota or League of Legends or even Smite, you'll usually have four abilities. So for example, you can have an ability.1, ability.2, ability.3, and so on. And you can simply assign these in the input handlers over here. And then you can just simply have a key in your IMC mapping to just activate those accordingly so that your users and people in your multiplayer game can simply assign what keys they want to use for those abilities and not be stuck with the default QWER. Ninja Bear Studios developed the Ninja Input plugin to stream input management by leveraging Unreal Engine's best practices. It's designed with flexibility and simplicity in mind, which helps developers manage complex input setup efficiently without having to write repetitive or boilerplate code. And that covers our video on the Ninja Input plugin. And I really do recommend this. It is very nice. I love how modular it is. And I have had zero issues using this plugin. I've gone through the C++ and made sure that it is something that I can recommend to my viewers. And it does help with my gameplay ability system journey in Unreal Engine. If you have any problems or have any questions, feel free to ask in the Ninja Bear Studios Discord that I'm going to be linking below in the description and in the comments. Thanks for watching, Curtis Row. Like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.